In this section, we'll take a look at optimization algorithms. We'll start off by understanding stochastic gradient descent a bit more. And then we'll look at adaptive learning algorithms, popular ones RMS Prop and Atom, that do adjustments to the learning rate online. And then we'll engage in a mini project where we'll do some language modeling and generate some text. In this video, we'll take a look at understanding stochastic gradient descent. We're going to take a look at visualizing functions, as well as visualizing learning, so we can understand how learning algorithms work. And then we'll take a look at the effect of learning rate, and then the effect of a parameter known as momentum that changes the learning rate on the fly. So what do we mean by learning? Well, multiple different learning algorithms exist, but they all have the exact same goal, finding the best parameter values with the least error. A learning algorithm really just adjusts your parameter values online and then iterates repeatedly until you can attain the best error value for the amount of time and processing power you're willing to invest in learning. Now, as we look into learning functions, let's try to visualize a really simple function and just look at a diagonal matrix stripe. We'll see up a bunch of random matrices and map those through to diagonals from the matrices. So we're just going to learn a diagonal function. In order to see inside the learning process and what's actually going on, we'll inspect this with some animation. And if it all works out, we'll actually learn our diagonal. We're going to be using the animation package here, and we start off by allocating a function that creates our diagonal by using NumPy's diag method. And then we're just going to do a 16 by 16 matrix and set up one. So you can see the zeros are the white spots and the ones are the black spots making the nice little stripe here. And then we'll use PyPlot to show our function as an image so we can get a sense of what we're looking at. So now we're going to set up random input and output, which is normal for what we would engage on with machine learning. And we're actually going to have a uniform random, and we're going to have 100,000 different samples. And then our outputs are actually going to be multiplied by our objective function. And then we're going to generate a data set and a data loader and take a look at each one of these things. And now we've seen what we have here. We just have some white noise, and it just looks like static. And if we multiply, you'll actually see multiplying takes that white noise and preserves only the diagonal stripe. Notice it isn't all black because we're still learning from our random values. So we're going to set up an MXNet computation here. We're going to do it on the CPU, and then we're going to set up parameters as we learned previously, and then we're going to figure out how to learn the diagonal, which is going to be the set of parameters that we want to learn. So basically we want to try to learn that diagonal function, that multiplication by ones just down that diagonal gradient. We're going to initialize the parameters, and then we're going to show one of these out of our parameters as binary. So this is the function that starts off. It's just a bunch of random values. We clearly haven't learned anything yet. Now we're actually going to build a really simple network. It's just multiplication with a square loss function. And at each training epoch, we're going to run that function. So we're going to multiply input by our learned diagonal in order to generate an output. And then we're going to track each one of the learning steps and we're going to keep that as a NumPy race. So what we're going to be doing with these learning steps here is we're going to be plotting them out so you can actually visualize what's going on. And you notice we're using MXNet and not Keras in this one. And the reason is it's a lot easier to crack open the learning loop here. So as we loop through each input output batch, and then do our loss and compute the backward gradient and then append the steps. Doing this in Keras actually requires callbacks and a bit of complexity, so MXNet is a more natural fit. And now here's our animation function. This is actually going to drive the learning and the loop. So you actually see you can animate the frames. We're going to update, we're going to show each one of the frames, and then we're going to turn the axes off, and then our function animation from the animation package just looks at each one of the frames and then closes it out and then animates it HTML. And so you can see this diagonal is emerging, but there's still a lot of noise. So we're going to use stochastic gradient descent, SGD, with a learning rate of 0 0.001. And you can actually see it goes down to a loss 0.3. So watch the animation here. You can actually see the diagonal begin to emerge a little bit. So we're somewhat learning the function, but we haven't got very far. So you can't actually see the full diagonal learned function emerge. So we have a couple of options with plain stochastic gradient descent. We can learn more, so we can train for more epochs or we can learn faster with a higher learning rate. And so we already know that more data helps. So let's look at the effect of a faster learning rate. Let's turn the learning rate up to zero point. You can see here the losses actually go down right away. We're at 0.15 compared to the 0.3 we had before. And let's take a look inside of what we've learned. You can see now we're actually getting somewhere. You can actually see the black stripe. We're learning our diagonal function we wanted to learn. And the rest of the random values are fading away. They're not all the way to gone. And it's not quite the exact answer, but this is a really good observation is that we change the learning rate, which is a hyperparameter, and you can use it to tune to the context of the problem and on the scale. So now let's add in another hyperparameter, momentum. So momentum works by scaling the learning at each step and it works together with the learning rate. And you can actually see the loss values right here, 0.29 is less and 0.12 is less. 
And so the output is already starting to look like a pretty solid diagonal function. You can see the diagonal stripe emerging and the noise around it fading away. So we're clearly getting really close to be able to learn our diagonal function. Now let's actually take the same concept and like dial up the amount of training and to get much lower losses. So we're gonna do a little bit higher momentum value, 0 0.9, and you can see the loss value is run down to 8.2 to the negative fifth. So that's nearly, nearly, nearly zero. So we're just gonna like use more momentum to learn more. And you can see instantly smaller losses and the image that emerges from what we've learned is very much the diagonal function. It's nearly perfect in just 10 epochs. So momentum is another hyperparameter to keep track of, and you can tune stochastic gradient descent. But remember, there's multiple learning algorithms with different parameters available. So you can see what we've done here is learn a really simple function, but we've been able to improve the results of our machine learning merely by changing hyperparameters, in this case, the learning rate and momentum values. So for the same set of input data, for the same objective function we're attempting to learn, this diagonal stripe, you can see radical differences in performance based on the hyperparameters that you pass into your learning function. This is something important to keep in mind. Just because your model isn't converging doesn't necessarily mean your data is wrong or that your problem is impossible. You may need to experiment with your learning algorithm itself.